But, uh, you know, I've got three, six grandchildren and I'm a paediatrician and potentially all the world's children are, are my patients. So I think when you lose your fear of death, then they have nothing over you at all. Yeah. And I don't have a fear of death. Yeah. I just want to ask a question. When you said you had, um, you know, the cruise and there was no one protecting you, had the what? You know, the oh, food. outside in the point. Yeah. yeah. What's to stop someone thinking about already and just going, gee, we can save a lot of money here and just, you know, blow that up. A couple of those, a couple of cruisers have a lunch at the same time. Just, you know, what about the weapons? If they don't need to get rid of the weapons, they can just hit, hit Oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah. With nuclear power plants, you know, you've got atom bombs all over the place. I so mean, why wouldn't someone have Well, I don't know why it hasn't happened yet, to be quite frank, because there are lots of times ways you can melt the reactor down, they're all in the book. You can cut off the external electricity supply that circulates the cooling water. That happened in Sweden in July last year. They lost it. I think lightning struck it. They have huge diesel generators the size of this sort of church, each one. Two failed to start and 20 minutes into the accident they finally got the third going. That was two minutes from a Chernobyl style meltdown. Mm -hmm. Two minutes. And the head of the reactor was so freaked out. I mean, they closed down five of the ten reactors in Sweden. That that was an accident, but it's very easy to chop off the electricity supply, or you know, or you can train to be a, a an operator and get into the control room and press the wrong switches. I mean, it's absolutely sitting there ready to be done. Furthermore, if you think about war now, if the Second World War was fought today, Europe would be uninhabitable for the rest of time. Yeah. It's a very good question too. They operate for 30 years, although they're trying to increase the length of time they're operating because all the expense is in building it and the government virtually builds it. And then the, the private companies come in and they sell the electricity at great expense and so it's cheap to keep it running, running, running rather than build a new one. So they're extending their lives another 20 years. Meanwhile, the radiation is so intense that the pipes are all cracking, it's called embrittlement. So by extending the reactor's life, they're much more likely to have a meltdown. Now when you finally close it down, it's so radioactive. It has to cool for anything up to 100 years. You know how cool. you said they just stopped making electricity in 11 uh, plants or stations? How do they do that? Because isn't the heat still going and they've got to cool that down? So the heat's down. still there, but they remove, they remove that fuel and put it into the cooling pools by big cranes and they kept, that fuel is kept cool. The waste fuel, it's called nuclear waste. The reactor itself is still very radioactive and has to be cut apart by remote control using robots. Maybe in 30 or 100 years when it's cooled down enough to even try that. That's more fossil fuel, of course. That's called decommissioning. No one's ever, no one's ever decommissioned a build, big reactor, and there are 40, 440 nuclear power plants in the world. 103 in America, and they're trying to build more without uranium. Uh, yeah, you and then you, yeah. Doc, you, um, in your book, you were talking about the standard operating procedure of a nuclear reactor releasing krypton. Argon and Xenon. Xenon. Noble gases. Pretty good. And you also said that they decay, to, even though they're noble and they're supposed to be benign, that they decay into something more deadly. Cesium? Cesium. And strontium. Ah, so. so that effectively, once it goes to its half life mm -hmm. of the. Well, it's continually argon. decaying. Okay. Yeah. So, so presumably once it decays over its... Yeah, you know, you've got those so things. Yeah. Strongly yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, put it, it's, uh, you've got Brian Brown, right? Brian Brown, yeah. He's got the name problem, so you might want to make an form. I'll have a few like Victoria where they wanted to put in the little bit of the commentary. Yeah. The green is going to land there. Oh, no, that might look nice and you can't put do you, know who's yeah, funding, do you know who's funding the anti-wind lobby in Victoria? The British nuclear power industry. Oh. There was an article by Wendy Frew about that in the Sydney Morning Herald. Follow the money. This is a really scary process. Scary, and, and it's not a conspiracy theory. 
Or consp it's not cons yeah, it's conspiracies against us and the ordinary people. Yeah. I love those wind farms. I think they're mad. Oh yeah, they're everywhere. The greenies in Victoria, the Is it the greenies? No. I think it's the people who have been taken in by the anti wind lobby. Maybe being paid something to, yeah. They're bringing nuclear power. We would lock it, lose our clean green image. Yep. Or bring in radioactive waste from overseas, mm -hmm. like you know, fifty thousand tons from America. So, who would you <laughs> approach to the tourism board? Or who the, would you approach? The farmers, but yeah, that's your question. See. I hadn't thought of that. It's a really good thought. And as you think of these things, I think, this is what happens to me, then I'm impelled to do them. As you think of it, what? I don't know any farmers. Well, <laughs> contact the National Farmers Federation. They're very powerful. Sorry about that. We, we should be selling non-radioactive food to a radioactive Europe. <coughs> I mean, imagine. But we don't, I guess, because we want to sell them uranium. Um, the other thing is, of course, now the mining companies are providing a lot of income, but of course that's transitory, as you pointed out, you know, uranium is only around, well, it, it'll be longer than nine years, because that's in all electricity, but they're fine, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the future then, what kind of fast green carbon from Australia as well. At the moment, uh, You don't need to, the carbon tax will build, build the renewables. How do you run the argument to displace nuclear? Okay, you don't because nuclear causes global warming in its own right. That's the first thing to establish. The second thing is to establish the you know the medical problems and the epidemics and malignancy. The third thing is to establish is you remove the government subsidies in America and it'll just die. So in our roadmap we've just produced for a carbon-free nuclear-free future. There are two things. You tax carbon, $40 a ton, that money then goes, and it's huge, billions of dollars a year, to build the renewables. And you stop the subsidies for nuclear, and it dies. Don't even sort of talk about nuclear and CO2. Yeah, oh, wait a minute, you've got one. <laughs> um, I remember growing up and having that fear of nuclear war. Yeah. And I'm completely ignorant of your power having the same effect. Yeah. Do we think we need to have, I suppose, some sort of education in that it's the same thing? Yeah. We don't actually understand that the repercussions are the same as if we were blowing each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, well, a meltdown, they say, would contaminate forever the size of Pennsylvania. Yeah. But then, don't forget that war is still more likely now than it was when you were growing up and had the fear because the Russian early warning system doesn't work anymore. Their satellites don't work. They're scared they're going to press the button by accident. They're scared America's going to launch, you know. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Do you, you remember Y2K? And, you know, I was in the White House talking.